So there's clearly been huge interest for your cryptocurrency trading product, but there's been tons of competition. So what makes Robinhood stand out? So I think when we entered the space, we saw an opportunity to provide a dramatically better product. And we're doing that in two ways. One is just by cutting down the pricing. So uh, through Robinhood, customers can buy and sell cryptocurrency with no commissions. And if you compare that to some of the other offerings on the market where you can pay four or 5% in commissions, that means you know after for every $100 you invest in Bitcoin and, or Ether, five, $5 goes, off, goes away in fees. And so we've dramatically lowered the price. And we've also built a platform where all of your investments can be in one place. So you can trade cryptocurrency, you can trade stocks, and options all commission free on Robinhood. Right, you're also quickly becoming one of the largest options trading platforms. And I think last week you just rolled out a multi-leg strategies product. So how That's is right. that performing? And are you trying to really target a more experienced investor base with this? I would say the performance has exceeded even our most optimistic uh, expectations. I mean, when we rolled out free options trading last December, it surprised a lot of people because if you, you actually look at it, options trading is much more expensive than, than stock trading. You get charged twice for every transaction. One is just the, the trading commission, but there's also a per contract fee. So a lot of our customers didn't even think that it would be possible to offer it for free. You know, we were getting feedback from early customers saying, you know, if you charge $4, that would be that would be amazing. We would move all of our portfolios over. So making it free, I think, really surprised a lot of people. And it's quickly turned us into one of the top options brokers in the world. I think we recently announced crossing two billion in in volume for our options business. And it's continuing to go, grow really, really quickly. Now, Robinhood was also founded during an historic bull market, and that's impeccable timing for a stock trading app. Are you concerned about how market volatility might impact user growth down the line? Um, I think that you know we've uh, been focused on improving the product and also offering more products to customers. I think you're right, we have benefited from good market conditions, um, but the, the great thing about offering different products like options and cryptocurrencies is it gives people tools to actually um, uh, make investments in all types of market conditions. So for example, cryptocurrencies as an asset uh, has seen less correlation with the broader equities markets. Uh, we offer thousands of different securities that give people exposure, not just to the US equity market, but also foreign markets through our wide catalog of ETFs. So um, I think long-term, um, we're gonna solve that problem by offering a broad suite of financial services. Five years from now, you should be able to open Robinhood and get anything that you can get at your local bank or brokerage house at dramatically higher value and much better customer experience. Yeah, and on, on that note, one of your investors has called Robinhood the Amazon of financial services. So what is next? Um, I think uh, if, if you sort of take the theme of, of Robinhood, it started out being free stock trading. But what we didn't anticipate was that customers would develop such uh, attachment to the brand and to what the company represents and into the mission really which is which started out being democratizing the markets and so the the mission's gotten broader over time and now um, you know we'll we'll take what we learned from from that first offering and we've used it to uh, expand into other things that we offer at the best possible price. So we want customers to think of Robinhood in a similar way that they think of Amazon, which is if you wanna buy something physical, you go to Amazon because you know you're, you're getting a great deal, you're getting the best possible deal and you're getting that item fast. Um, and I think people have been missing that in financial services where they've been getting ripped off and overcharged by the incumbents and the legacy players. I mean, paying 5%, 10%, sometimes even higher fees. If we lower that to effectively zero, um, I think we'll, we see an opportunity to do that across the board, not just in investment products, but in all sorts of other products. I mean, you currently collect interest on cash and accounts. So is saving accounts the next iteration of that? 
I mean, I think uh, eventually we'll we'll get to every product. I mean, everything that you can walk into your bank and get. I think the the question of what's next is is a challenging one, right? Um, I think that uh, well, we we can't obviously announce the the near term product roadmap, but eventually we'll cover everything. And the the hard part of running this business is figuring out what products do we offer at what times to get the maximal impact and maximum value for customers. I think near term, we're still gonna be focused on investing products because that's kind of our wheelhouse, but. Um, so we actually spoke in 2016, back when you were doing this integration with Baidu. That's right. What actually became of that? And would you consider entering the Chinese market again? Yeah, I think that uh, we're obviously uh, a very ambitious company, judging by the product roadmap and all of these things. And a couple of years ago, uh, as you pointed out, we we decided to launch in China with uh, with uh, with Baidu as our partner, and I think um, I mean China obviously is a very very tough market. We were a much smaller company at the time. I think we were somewhere around 50 people. So what we realized was that uh, launching in another market, especially a market like China, is uh, is sort of like growing this huge branch, this like really big branch to our business when the trunk is is not yet so big. So we realized that uh, probably in order to make that effort succeed, we needed to invest a lot into it. And uh, when, we, when we kind of looked at it, we realized that that investment could be better made in our core business. And so we doubled down on the US market and launched all of these new products like Robinhood Gold, we launched uh, options, web, cryptocurrency. So I think for the time being, uh, we're focused on on the U.S. market because it's so big and we're growing so quickly here. But at some point, we do have uh, we have global ambitions, and we think that the whole world could benefit from low low cost, high value, great user experience financial tools. And there's a lot of customers all around the world that are that are underserved.